All right, looks like Alluvium Zero is in QA testing, quality assurance testing for anyone who doesn't know. And Johnny from the official Alluvium team just dropped some updates here recently in the Discord. So I'm just gonna go ahead and give you a quick summary. The very first thing that I want to go through here is his first update on what things they have found so far in the current QA testing build. They have found some UI and some art bugs. And so with the bugs that they have found so far, it doesn't sound like there's anything that's game breaking or very critical or like way too difficult to fix or very difficult to fix at all it sounds like there are either you know nice to have features that would be nice to be fixed or on the other end of the spectrum just easy fixes that, that they can implement and and get fixed up prior to the private alpha release so that was really good to hear so there are also some things that haven't been tested just yet that will be tested hopefully in the next qa build now these features that have yet to be tested are the performance the load times some of the animations and some of the vfx uh to get into the next build and get some QA testing done on those. It sounds like there are some back end things that they need to fix up as you know, it's sort of the plumbing as he describes it here. And it sounds like these are just like the, you know, the back end workings of what they need to get fixed up and everything for things such as like downloading the game client and all of that. And it sounds like there's a list of things that are uh, nice to have features that they're aiming to get implemented for the first private alpha release. And there are some things that he wants to get updated and fixed and redone such as like the descriptions for the plants and he also wants to redo some of the building descriptions as well and so he also dropped this little tidbit basically saying that there is a very high chance of us getting a build here in this year and based on the updates with the qa testing and all that it doesn't sound like there's any major or like you know game breaking bugs or anything or anything that's going like crazy or going awry i know that they were also aiming to get something out prior to christmas so fingers crossed that we actually do get that that would be amazing that'd be really cool especially because it sounds like you know tinfoil hat on here but um based on everything that's been kind of buzzing around regarding overworld it'd be really cool to get the overworld release very very soon as well as a build for alluvium zero before christmas that would be crazy to have overworld and alluvium zero and a whole bunch of new content and new gameplay and everything to be diving into that would be amazing now not only have we been getting these little text updates and snippets here from johnny in the discord we've also been getting some videos that he's been making some tips and tricks here regarding the updated workings of pass and everything and, and their effects on the buildings and their upgrade times and all that as well as the rate of efficiency that buildings have in relation to their position and and their distance to and from other buildings on your land plot so these tips and everything as well as the most recent one that he just dropped on the research and the scanning and some really good gems and tidbits of information there that you're going to want to hear you're going to want to know going into the private alpha when we finally get our hands on that so there isn't a whole lot else to elaborate on in these clips and everything so i'm gonna go ahead and just play these clips out and i hope you all enjoy them uh johnny is an, is an incredible guy and he's been he's been very helpful in communication in explaining things and updating us on all of these new things regarding alluvium zero so again i hope you all enjoy and i'll see you all in the next one have a good one. Lunatic. <laughs> and the last one I want to show Howdy folks. In this video, I just wanted to show you how the paths affect the build and upgrade times of a building. So if we select this carbon matter silo here and click the upgrade button, we can see that the upgrade time is 20 minutes. This silo is not connected to any paths. So if we build some paths, now connecting that silo to the path system, click upgrade again. We see the upgrade time is now down to 16 minutes. And the more surrounded by paths a building is, the more the effect. So. If we move this across a little here, click the upgrade button again, we're now down to 15 minutes. You'll notice the returns are diminishing. So if, for example, we move this building into a place where it's completely surrounded by paths, we're down to 14 minutes. The long story short, to optimize build times, you should look to surround the buildings with as many paths as possible, but be mindful that completely a surrounding a building is using up a lot of space and only giving you a small bonus.
Thanks. Hi folks, here's a quick look at efficiency. So firstly, let's zoom out a little bit and let's turn on the efficiency view. We can see numerous buildings with different efficiency indicators. Let's focus here on this condenser plant. So currently it has a 92% efficiency and let's see how efficiency changes as we move the building around. If we move it closer to a power station, it will get a little more efficient. However, because this building is about extracting hydrogen, moving it close to lakes or hydrogen pumps will make it much more efficient. So if we move it in the middle of these three hydrogen pumps, we can see we've now maxed out efficiency at 150%. Conversely, if we move these condensers close to each other, we'll find that their efficiency goes down. That's a quick look at building efficiency. Thanks guys. Howdy folks. Today we're going to have a look at scanning and research. Let's start by selecting the Singularity Scanner. We can start a scan like any other activity by clicking the Activity button and confirming the cost. Unlike other activities, scanning, research and fuel-based activities can't be sped up with credits. Fortunately, through the magic of the development build, I can speed up this 24-hour activity so that you guys can see the result. Let's see what we got. We found Tiru. Do note that scanning is not always successful. Sometimes it may take two, three, or even more attempts to find alluvial biodata. Once we have alluvial biodata, we can use it for research. But before we do that, let's have a look at the holographic statue. The holographic statue lets us display our alluvial biodata. We can click the structure, choose display, and pick the biodata we want to display. Displaying biodata will slightly increase the chances of finding other alluvials with an affinity that matches that of the displayed alluvial biodata. Let's now take a look at researching the biodata. Let's click our materials lab and click the research button. Again, we select the biodata we're interested in researching. We note here that our success rate is 100%. This is not typical and again is based on the magic of the development build. Typical success rates will be more like 5%. Let's start our research. We'll fast forward and let's see what we get. Not only did we level up, but we found Hybrid Armor 1. An awesome result. We can use either the research building or the data bank to browse facts and blueprints and biodata. We haven't found any facts yet, but we'll save them for the launch. We don't want to spoil it. Thanks for your time, guys.